Dear students, now we will solve an example of repeated alignments. Just to give you a background, why are repeated alignments useful? Because in biological molecules, there are certain portions or sequences, for instance, in case of DNA, certain nucleotide sequences, and in case of some proteins, some uh, amino acid sequences, which are conserved. So these conserved regions are also repeated in case that function is required at different positions in the protein or DNA. So in order to find these repeatedly occurring sequences within another sequence, we would want to do repeated sequence alignment or repeated matching. So how do we do that? We do it by a slight modification to the Smith-Waterman algorithm and we will see how it is done in the slides. Okay, to begin with, so this is your recurrence relationship. That you can use. So the first step is that you initialize F00. So F is your alignment matrix. So you initialize the first element here, this one to be zero. Next, you initialize the first column here by using this recurrence relationship. So, you have to apply a maximal operator at both of these values. Just to remind you, in case of the global alignment, we initialize the first column by minus i multiplied by the gap penalty. In case of the local alignment, we initialize the first column by zeros. But in this case, for the repeated sequence alignment, we are initializing the first column by taking the maximum value of from amongst these two, which we will compute. So here you see something special. So there is a T variable here. So this T is the threshold. So this can be 1 or 2 or 3 depending on the stringency or the strictness that you want to apply in filtering the local alignments. So if you have a high threshold, then those alignments that will be having only 3 matches will be ignored. But if you set it to 1, then only those local alignments will be singled out which have a length of 1. So using this T from amongst these values, or more, you can initialize fi0, which means you can initialize the first column. So essentially, unmatched regions and ends of matches will be filtered out, only allowing matches to end where they have a score of at least t, or at least bigger than t. Next, you want to compute the rest of the matrix here. So, to compute the rest of the matrix, if you remember, in the needleman wunsch and the Smith-Waterman algorithm, you did a maximal on top, diagonal and left elements. So, here you can see this is your diagonal element, here is your left element and here is your top element. So, this portion is coming in from here. So, you just take a maximum from these four values and you can set a position in the matrix here. So, in this way, you can fill the rest of the matrix as well as deal with start and extension of matches. So, why are we doing this? Because we want to keep track of the alternatives produced by the maximum. So, please remember this recurrence relationship if you want to perform repeated alignment. So, what happens if we apply this recurrence relationship? So, let's see. So, here is an example for you. So, you have two sequences here. And here. So, you want to search for the repeated occurrence from this sequence in this sequence. 
So what you have done is you have filled up all the positions in the alignment matrix as you can see here and then you have done some traceback. So as you can see the traceback is very strange in this case. So we need to understand how to perform this traceback. But before we go to the traceback, please remember that we have used a match award of plus 2, a mismatch award of minus 1, a gap of minus 2 and t equals 1 in this case. So the alignment result looks something like this. So here is your sequence that you had here on top and here you can see below that you have found alignment here and then you have also found the same HE here later in the sequence as well. So the same sequence has been found two times HE and HE within the sequence here. So this is what repeated alignment is all about. Now we would see how this very strange traceback works because this is very important in finding out these regions which are matching and repeated. Okay, let's see. So towards the traceback strategy, the first thing that you have to do is start from the top right. So as you just saw in the previous slide, we started from the last column and the top element. And then we progressively moved column by column until we reached the first column in the matrix. So how do we move from one column to the next column? So from the top element in the first column, we move directly to the highest value in the preceding column. So the jump will take you to the highest score in the previous column. So let's take a look at that again. So you started from 9 and you jumped to 29. So as you know, 29 is the highest score in this column and you jumped directly from 9 till 29. This jump is what I'm talking about and then you can see you just moved as the typical traceback does until you reached the first element in one of these columns preceding them. So next we're going to evaluate how we're going to proceed to the columns before that. So we repeat these two steps that is we reach till the top row and then we jump to the previous column by selecting the maximum score in the previous column. We repeat this process, we repeat this process until we reach the 0, 0 in the 0, 0 position of the alignment matrix. In this way, we can complete the traceback and extract the repeated alignments. So here, the repeated alignments are shown once again. We started from here, we jumped to 29 and we continued the traceback until we reached 1 and then we jumped to 21 and then we kept moving until we reached 0 in the first row and the first column. So the alignments that we obtained once again are given here for you. So in conclusion, the repeated alignments can be found by using a modified traceback strategy and a threshold T which will filter out anything that is less than that threshold.